Good morning, everybody. Um, I feel like I got a little bit set up. So um, I'm an attorney by trade. Um, <laughs> and so a recovering attorney, as I, I like to say. And uh, I'm the head of development, which means that I handle everything from franchise sales um, and recruitment all the way up to when we open a restaurant. And then I feel like I got set up again because where's Inspire Brands? We've been doing modular buildings for 35 years. So you guys can take a little bit from us, maybe. Um, so the good news is what we get to do is actually, while everybody else was, and I say this a little tongue in cheek, right? While everybody else was working on the restaurant of the future, we already had it, right? Double drive through modular build, closed kitchen, all the things that all of a sudden we look like geniuses two years ago. Um, but obviously the brand needed an update it needed to look better and not just for the consumer, right? We think about the consumer all the time. You look at this and you say, wow, that looks radically different, right? It's, it signals something different to the consumer, but for our people, right? Especially in the labor crisis, who wants to come and look and work in a building like that, right? So we need to enhance it, just not for the consumer, but for our folks who are working in the restaurant every day. So if you take a look, you can kind of see this is restaurant 5183, but if insiders know, that means restaurant 183. Probably never been updated quite like this before. Um, looks like a brand new building. But Aaron shared what's kind of funny because we had the same thing, right? People had dr driven by the trade area, saw the construction up, and knowing that we're modular buildings, they're calling us and saying, wow, you put that new building up on that site? No, not a new building. Just scraped it off, prettied it up, made it look better. You know, we kind of said, hey, we, we got kind of that diner retro feel, right? And we've been there for a long time. And, but we wanted to kind of clean it up, make it more modern, give it some of our iconic stuff. We still, you still see the chrome, still see what we call the deconstructed checkerboard on the front. So this was our first one. Um, it just opened this summer. We're not stopping there. You can see the second one. Um, on the bottom was in Orlando. It just opened on December the 15th. Why do I know that? Because it was the day before our national convention when all our franchisees came in. Um, and my head of construction, who happens to be in the room, was slinging landscaping because the franchisees were showing up the next day in a big tour bus and we weren't quite ready for them. And you can see also the nod to the communities. As Aaron said, we like to think that we serve the communities. We Our, our values really is to serve the hardworking and often underestimated. And so each of the murals, they'll be painted on, or put on both sides of the building. Um, one will call out to the community and the other hopefully will have some of our famous fries on it. Municipalities don't necessarily like that, right? They think it's advertising. But that just gives you a little bit of how we're bringing this transformation to life. We have six more under construction. We have another 18 in for permitting. We're gonna roll a full on uh, remodel program out to our franchisees at the next convention, which is in November. So you'll see a lot of transformation in the marketplace. And then you heard leveraging technology. This was kind of fun because the headline, of course, that went all throughout corporate was checkers and rallies jumps McDonald's and starts AI. We usually don't get a nod from the big three, right? Um, but this thing has been in works for a year. This, was, this wasn't something we just came up with, right? We really wanted to get this technology right. And in the time of a labor crisis like now, it makes a lot of sense. We know that the hardest place, the hardest position is at that drive-through. They're multitasking, they're pushing orders, they're grabbing drinks, they're trying to get the next order, they're trying. And this AI technology so far has been phenomenal for us. It picks up accents. Our CEO is, uh, has a British accent. It picks up her accent. It will, it learns as it goes. We have better accuracy, believe it or not. People forget to punch keys when they're at the, this thing doesn't forget, right? And we have better upsell. We know that our cashiers get tired. They don't always upsell like they should. The machine doesn't ever forget to upsell, <laughs> ever, right? So we're seeing better upsell, we're seeing better accuracy. We plan on leveraging this technology in different ways in the future perhaps to do inventory, right? How nice would it be for a general manager to walk back and tell 
somebody what they have and have it process what we should order in the back of house. So more to come on that. We're rolling this out. You probably saw the um, headlines across all of our corporate restaurants. So right now we have about 15 of our restaurants have the AI technology and we continue to test and learn and test and learn with that technology. And then talking a little bit about operations. It, it's hard to believe when I put this up, it kind of gets a chuckle because it's hard to believe you can streamline your operations when you operate in a 954 square foot box. Um, and actually, for those of you who are from the West Coast in California, it's now 1,008 thanks to the dry storage requirements. Um, it's 1,008 square feet of our new, on our new prototype. But we did actually a time and motion study. And we found that our crew in this little teeny tiny box was walking a mile and a half extra every hour, right? Crossing each other, going back and forth, so it wasn't very efficient. So when we figured out this time in motion study, we redesigned the entire kitchen. Some new technology, some different um, ways to do things. And what we're seeing now is one, we're faster. Speed of service is better. As a result, taste of food is better. Less customer complaints. And more important, better morale in the restaurant the employee doesn't feel overwhelmed anymore. And so this, we call it the fit kitchen. I don't know, it should be the unfit kitchen because you actually walk less. Um, but the fit kitchen, and we've rolled this out in all of our corporate markets. Um, and we'll be done with that rollout. Hopefully, we would have been done at the end of the year had there not been equipment delays um, by the middle of the second quarter. So franchisees have this available to them as well. Obviously, they're rolling it on a, on a go-forward basis. All of our new restaurants will have the new look, and we'll also have the Fit Kitchen technology in it. And then I want to go a little bit to this new wayfinding sign. You see there it says um, mobile ordering and drive through So the benefit of having the two drive throughs is we actually went to a dedicated e-commerce lane. So what we call the low side, which is where on the passenger side, some of our restaurants, you'll see this, where you can order ahead and you can zip right through the lane and pick up your food there. We already had the benefit before the pandemic of having integrated our POS system with all our delivery drivers. So it's very easy. It actually comes out through the normal POS system. There's no tablets. There's no anything like that. It actually comes out as a different color ticket. So our team knows that it's actually a mobile order. Mobile order, it goes to the left side. We've adapted this a little bit for our franchisees, right? Some of the franchisees have really busy day parts um, and they said, hey, listen, you know, I'm in small town, Louisiana. My delivery sales are never gonna be what you would get the typical delivery. Can I run my double drive-through a majority of the day and then flip to e-commerce when I need it? And so we did, we designed something that actually rotates, right? So the sign just flips and they can run it however is most uh, efficient for them. So everything we're designed, that we're doing now is just not for obviously the consumer, make it for the ease of pickup, actually makes it for the ease of delivery drivers in this instance. It's really about making it great for the team and becoming more efficient, more effective. Like Aaron said, we're always looking for um, opportunities to work on materials, to get better equipment, to do that. Right? We opened up our first restaurant of the future, um, and the second restaurant of the future looked different than the first restaurant of the future. And these next six, the whole, the whole process of these next six that we're gonna do is simply to learn. We're gonna try different things. We're gonna test different materials, because at the end of the day, being both on the franchisee side and the franchisor side, to get buy-in from our franchisees, yes, they're concerned about the look and feel of the restaurant. Yes, they're concerned about being able to keep their staff, but ultimately, they're also concerned about their return on investment. So when you take a look at what we've done to transform the building, we have to be cognizant of what's the spend? Does it make sense? What kind of traffic increases are we seeing? What kind of retention are we getting from this? Are we seeing less turnover in the marketplace? And so we're a little behind on this, but we did launch our app. Um, so if you don't have the Checkers and Rallies app, I suggest you go download the app. Um, and we did get, you know, 
almost up to a million people in our loyalty program now, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal for the first uh, year of the launch. But now we got to go second generation on our app, right? We got to make it more convenient, easier for people to use, easier for people to understand. We know it's all about convenience. So right now we're working on the technology, kind of the same thing along where you just swipe your app when you pull up to the drive-through and you'd be able to see all of your values, all of your couponing, anything that you have, and streamlining that to you as a particular person. The good thing about the AI technology is eventually you'll get on the site and the AI technology will say, welcome back, Bob. Would you like the same big Buford you had last week? Right? So it's going to make it much more efficient and allow us to be able to cater to our loyalty customers, personalized offers in their, in their app. So we have a lot, a lot of things going on and a lot of work ahead. Um, like Aaron, we're growing. We will open 60 restaurants this year across the country. We are, if you think about checkers and rallies, we're actually not in the middle of the country. It's very strange. We're on the West Coast, and then we're kind of everything east of, of the Mississippi uh, River. Um, that's not to say we aren't expanding, right? Supply chain is expanding. It's difficult right now, as you guys know, between materials, commodities, um, equipment, which is top of mind. I think I spent, I should change my title. I say that we laugh about it, you know, VP of equipment, because I feel like every single day there's something else that becomes a long lead time item and you've got to figure out how you're going to make sure that you can get these restaurants open. We're super excited about the transformation, super excited about where the brand is headed. Um, and I am ready to open up for questions if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I think we have time for a one or two, Chris. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I want to, just because it's the, the, the flashiest uh, thing there in the middle of the, the technology piece with the 15 restaurants that have the AI there so far. Uh -huh. uh, what's the customer feedback like so far? And I, I'm not so familiar with the technology in terms of how it seems that it, the interface is with that. So what, 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 what do customers think? So actually the customers like it and here's why, right? So they're at the order board. The, obviously the AI, the, the computer comes on, asks them to take their order. It calculates, it tells them what their order is going to be. It repeats the order back to them. But more importantly, now the person that's standing at the drive through window can pay their full attention to the customer. So instead of worried about the next order, their turn, they're not facing, they're not giving drinks right away, all their attention is on that person. And so we're finding that the consumer satisfaction for the AI technology has actually gone up. Everybody's hesitant. So if you guys are around, both the one in Lakeland and the one in Orlando, if you guys want to stop by, actually have AI technology live. Um, and so we got to play with it. It was kind of fun. We tried to trick it, right? We did one order and then two orders and paid cash for one order and paid credit for one order and tried to make it, you know, hesitate and subtract things and add things and it followed right along. So the, the consumer feedback has been phenomenal, so much so that we're rolling out to our entire chain. And just so you guys know, we, we operate 260 of the 860 some odd restaurants. So we do, open a, uh, we do operate a pretty significant fleet of um, our own. Okay, thank you. There you go. There's an activity for you on the way to the airport. You can stop by and chat to an AI. Uh, any other questions? We've got time for one more. Okay, Chris McDonald, thank you so much.